Vamos lá. And we're live. I was that. That was great. That was beautiful. Yeah, was not, not as beautiful as you two, fellas. Cheers to another. Ooh, cheers, cheers to, to another that, episode of for having me, Frequency boys. 43, episode 12 to be exact. One, two. One, two, right? Hey, shout out Tom Brady right here. Um, my Super Bowl prediction, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Just wanted to shout that out. Um, I think the bold a- take. It's a bold take. After but- the first two games, I was kind of hyped for them before the season, but after the first two games, I was like, you know. Well, this is, this is my understanding of it, right? So anytime you go to a new place, right, you go to a new college, you go to a new job, it's going to take some time to adjust and get used to, like, everything, right? Like Tom Brady's learning a new playbook. Uh, with COVID, bro, he's had limited practices, no, no preseason no, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. This is no excuse for, for him not performing to, to his standards because all the other NFL teams have to do this. Mm-hmm. But I do think uh, in just a little bit of time, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to learn how to win some games and they're going to make a Super Bowl run. That's, I said it here on Frequency 43. Bam. Hey, Gronk's out there now. So, I mean, they got that chemistry. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Can... Yeah, Gronk, Gronk is there. Um, he he's, he's gonna start chemistry, you know. for them this year. It's it's weird, but uh, yeah. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to Bijan for uh, joining yeah, us here today on yeah. Frequency Forty Three. Pleasure uh, to be here. You know, I've, I've wanted to come on for a while now, so you know, it's great. It's great to finally get the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Speak my mind. Never thought you'd make it, man. Never thought you'd make it. We had a couple of uh, podcasts set up actually, but you know. I bailed on one of them, you know. Somebody you know, bailed me, on another one. I was off. I was off doing something, you know. Yeah. yeah. So we had a, we had some trouble getting this one together, but uh, now that we're here, making it count. A pleasure to be here, you know. I'm glad we made it work. So mm. it's a great yeah, vibe. That's... I love I love what you guys got going. I've seen a few episodes. I'm a big fan. Yeah, so, it's. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're an avid listener to Frequency 43, I mean, you know one thing and one thing only. You know who Jordan Peterson is. And another thing is, you know, to eat your fruits and vegetables. Um, we're avid Joe Rogan supporters, and I think we're very open-minded and um, willing to willing to really talk about things that people, you know, don't really give a shit about because they're out posting TikToks and shit. But I think we have a better understanding of current events and the long picture of things in this world. And I think people who are more in tune with that. Um, kind of like frequency 43 and you know we we do what we do this is our medicine and we love to do it and is that a fucking travis scott burger i see next to you lucas liberatory how did you like that what's the hype was it worth it is dollars? it is you i actually i have half of it i have half of it left over there actually let me let me get it real quick bring it uh, up, Dijon, bring it yeah, let well, Bijan tell you the story. Let Bijan tell you the story of of what happened when we went to go get the Travis Scott meal. Oh, quite, it was a mess, quite the, man. Quite the big, nightmare. Big old drive through scramble. You know, it was a classic. So, the the problem was we were trying to use a coupon. You know, a couple little McDonald's deal. I believe it was forty spicy nugs for for ten dollars. You know, and uh, wait, was that the deal we were going for? Was it the forty for ten? Forty nugs. Forty nugs, ten dollars. No, no, no. That that wasn't the deal. That we were trying to get. The, oh, it was the two two fries. The two free fries on top of the twenty <laughs> nugs, man. That's where they got us. That's where they got us because they said that they didn't do it at that location. You know, you know some deals are only for participating locations. And just uh, yeah, I, you know, fast food chains they'll always get you on that. You know, you show up with a coupon, it's like you end up just paying the regular price all the time. I swear, you know, they they. They just want you in the door, you know what I mean? But uh, but, but people like us, we base our whole order around the coupon, man. Like, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna come through with the coupon, like that's my whole order right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it kind of botched. It kind of botched order. our whole night. Seriously, ultimately, yeah. ultimately, it comes down to: Are you gonna pay x x amount of dollars for for this food, or are you gonna pick another restaurant? You know what I mean? 
But when you're that that deep in in the drive through you can't just go pick another restaurant. You know, you're yeah, they, got you. they got you, man. The coupon, you're done. The coupon gets you in the door, right? And then on that coupon, you know, it could be only the store expire. Bros, coupon could be expired. You know, coupon could virtual coupon doesn't expire. Virtual coupon <laughs> <doesn't> expire. <laughs> I don't know. You have to go into. I'm saying you could actually. Have, they do. They do. They do. Saying, they do. But once they expire, they're they're off the app. You know, it's not like it's just just sitting there expired. Yeah, it was. It was a tease. It was for surely a tease. tease. They 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 it's really a tease. I swear. But like, I think they would pull this shit on Fry Friday, man. Like, come on, it's yeah. a big day for their people. You want to yeah. talk about another tease? I got pulled this Travis Scott burger that. John was talking about earlier, uh, or Bijan was telling me about how we we went to the McDonald's, um, experienced some problems. It's okay. Still got my Travis Scott burger. It's for McDonald's burger. It's not bad, you know, price wise, not bad. Could be better, you know. But McDonald's is pretty expensive, you know. For like, if you wanted to go cheap, man, I just haul my ass down the street to Burger King, man. You know what I'm saying? So. BK Snackbox. <laughs> BK Snackbox reigns supreme. $3. For, what, what is it? $3 for a cheeseburger? 10 nuggets. Mm. Medium fries and a drink? For, for $3? Yeah. Burger King is out of this world. With the <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, but let me finish, okay? It's, it's not a bad burger, not a bad price, not a bad... It's just the hype around it is is unreal, you know. There's absolutely nothing special with it, and I well, think this, this is your second time getting it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's a good. If when I go to McDonald's and I look at the menu, I'm like, "Fuck, man, I'll just get Travis Scott." It's so simple, you know, and and some nugs with it. But um, I'm not a veteran McDonald's goer. Honestly, we were just going because of the Travis Scott meal, and that's where I, that's where it has us. And it's the, it's just the name, bro. No, to back to different both 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 times I went I went for the spicy nugs. I okay, that's true. Back. I personally I saw, went I for the Travis Scott. Um, but Travis, the Travis Scott meal just gets you in the door. You know what I mean? You yeah. Know, a Travis Scott meal, you know the whole. If it if his name was anyone else besides Travis Scott, it wouldn't be there, right? Because I I don't want to say you want to be Travis Scott, but it's just like some sort of like status symbol where like or or for me it's like oh like it just makes so much sense i'm paying six dollars for a, a quarter pounder meal instead of eight dollars and exactly that's that's okay. why i get I it, like that's it's, how it most kind of people look at that's it. why most people are going but yeah. like i mean what what percentage of people do you think are buying it just because it's tied to travis scott can't be that many people um, like, why I, would you buy it just for that i wouldn't i would say i wouldn't say like i would say it's around 35% of each person. I wouldn't say like one person bought it only because of Travis Scott. I'd say there's okay. a lot of reasons why like someone would buy it, right? Like, oh, you're hungry, like like this. But I, I mean, 30, 35%, because if it wasn't called the Travis Scott meal, you know, if it was called the Sydney Jackson meal or some other name. Uh, would, yeah, would or the Breonna it. Taylor meal. I was literally just thinking that, but I, I didn't even want to say it. I'm gonna say it's a little hot, hot topic. Right? Yeah, it's a little hot. But um, hot. with that being said, um, it's like everybody's hyped about the Travis Scott meal, and everybody's super excited about the Travis Scott meal, and like it's cool to go get the Travis Scott meal. But like, but like, and then the coronavirus, it's like cool to wear a mask and shit, but like, and stay inside. But like, but like, when has it ever? You know, it should not be it should not be a hype thing to go to a fast fast food restaurant and like get a meal and stuff. And it's just getting us all addicted to these fat food and fast food and our whole entire nation's getting obese. And um honestly, like if you know, we're so worried about the coronavirus and everything, but then everybody's just going in order like two Travis Scott meals to the dome and then, and then just playing Fortnite all night, you know, it's like, well, let's see, there's some like serious problems in our society that, that just, right. you know, masks aren't going to fix. 
Yeah, and I, I was, we've been talking about the whole relationship between health and the coronavirus, and, and the reality is, if you're if you're more susceptible to getting the coronavirus, a, a major portion of that is because your immune system is compromised by most likely your diet and lifestyle choices. Now, what does that say about our society? That's like we have to socially isolate ourselves, but continue to, to choose these these poor health choices making us more vulnerable to not only all diseases, but more importantly, the pandemic of this coronavirus. You know what I mean? It's, it's such a double standard, right? Because like, we want people to move and socialize and be active, but we don't want people to get the virus. So like, what, like, like I, I just feel like our whole approach to it is, is mismanaged. But at, at the same time, I think all of our choices, especially in, in America, are subjective to the individual, right? It, it, it's your choice as an individual to choose what you want to choose and the market will dictate um, dictate it. And, and it just so happens that everyone chooses to eat Travis Scott meals and, and shitty meals because, well, they're addictive and they taste good and they're cheap. Yeah. I agree. At the end of the day, it all comes back to money. But then again, like, there's like a serious, like, you know, like, um, the, in the past, like, like you go to, a, you go to Europe, man, and they just live their lives different, you know, like it's not the same. So I feel like there's something in America that's like in our American, like capitalistic culture. That's like, like maybe makes us, well, more susceptible, makes us more susceptible to like fast food restaurant or like, this is like where fast food restaurants started Smith. So like, we're, our culture is like it's so toxic in my opinion there's a lot of parts of our culture that are like really toxic that we need to we need to change and that, so that one of them one me, of them being Travis got me and i just ordered so the reason it. i eat the reason i end <laughs> up eating a lot of fast food is because out, out here that's the only thing open past like well like 10 p.m 11 p.m especially because the coronavirus like safeway closed at like 10 p.m now but like Taco Bell is open to like three in the morning. Right. So I mean, it just kind of so fucks you over. It's like, if you're yeah. like me and you don't really keep food around the house that much, you get fucked. Yeah, that's another, it's just so convenient to eat shitty food, right? Not only is it shitty, it's cheap and you know, you're probably on a budget and all this and what Lucas just came down to is yeah, it ultimately is all about money right like we're here to make money to be financially secure for our future and and what i want to flip the switch is well what about this body that every single day you are another day closer to dying and is that a pessimistic glass half full way of looking at it yes but but what are you going to do about it you know what i mean like how how are you going to fight it you know like life's just a fight bro we're in the we're only in the second round of of, of 12 in life you know so just a warm-up to the fight oh yeah bro this is like the fight you know hasn't punched? really started yet gotten punched in the face yet in life you know you you your teeth haven't fallen out you know your hair is still there you know you you are fighting but i, I don't know where i'm going with this but i i just you know these these sorts of things just just jazz me up and um make me continue to try and uh make healthier decisions but um it is what it is, you know, you get your decks in life and, and what you do dictates how much time you get uh, putting in the work of your sacrifice. Got to find your sacrifice. Yeah, so that's another thing. Like what Bijan, we talk about this all the time on Frequency 43 and, and it's like, well, if, if life, and I don't want to like be like, like super like uh, poopy pants, but my poo, my, my pants do have a little bit of poop in them right now, but uh, if life is inevitable <laughs> suffering, right? So, so right, it's only going to get up, you know. So, so yeah. what is going to justify that? And, and what we always talk about on Frequency Forty Three is is you have to pick some sort of short term goal and long term goal that that is so fucking important and meaningful to you that it will justify all the shit that's going to happen in the future and, and all this other stuff. You know, like what is it? Like for some people, it, it's rock climbing, like, right? Like, look at that guy 
on Netflix. I, I was it called the Don Wall or Alex, something? Alex, Alex. Alex. Oh, this fool just climbs rocks all day. You know what I mean? And some people paint stuff and some people make music. And you know what? The worst part about it is some people don't find their sacrifice. And, you know, like I've, I've, I've dabbled in myself, you know, but I'm not, I haven't like jumped the boat. And, and, and it's something I'm waiting for. Uh, we, none of us have yet. Really? Uh, no, I definitely haven't found my sacrifice, man. I don't even know what I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, man. I have no idea yeah. what I'm doing. And it's tough, but, you know, eventually, like, <laughs> It, it'll pick you or you right will pick there with it or, or neither and you you'll just you'll just suffer uh endlessly but the point is you gotta do something and sell out for it 100 percent to justify all the all the suffering in life and and if it's truly meaningful and fulfilling to you then then you will you will live a great life and and is that not what, what we're all about on frequency 43 is to to take a look at, at ourselves and these listeners and say, hey, you could be doing better right now, you know? And, and what we do is we kind of talk about shit and we carve a path to, to really um, figure out what our, what our optimization is for both our mental and physical bodies. <laughs> Bam. Bam. They just lay it no, out You there. know, I'm all about setting goals. You know, I think it's important to set goals. But at the same time, I feel like it's equally, if not more important, to just live in the moment, man. If you're devoting all your time to, like, making oh, certain goals, like... 100%. So, you know, you can't get... You just can't get too caught up in it, is what I'm trying to say. I, I 100% agree with it. And I'm going to quote something from Kung Fu Panda, and then I'll go right back to you, Bijan, is... Um, yeah, this was Kung Fu Panda. But I remember this quote because <laughs> I, I thought it was so cool. And it said... Um, the future is the future. You know, you don't know it. The past is the past. It already happens. But today, today is a gift. Today, today is a fucking gift. It, the life was given to you. You didn't ask for it. It just happened. Today is a gift. And that's why it's called the present. And I think that was a great, you know, kind of, I don't want to say counterpoint, just adding on top of it is truly to live in the moment and be present is 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 yeah. being happy i don't know i think that's is that a, was that a Uguay quote if i heard that correctly i was wondering the same thing did that come from the panda was that a jack yeah, black that quote? came from the turtle bro i, I don't I, it was some it was the like the, which one's the turtle panda's that's Ugwe, bro that's yeah, Ugwe. It must, it must be him it must be was that the sensei i thought the sensei was like a like like a monkey oh, but or the, yeah but but the master was the fucking turtle bro who ascended bro I got I got to rewatch Kung Fu Panda. That's one thing I just learned. He ascended with the cherry blossom, bro. Yeah. What's the deal with the cherry blossom? Is there some sort of symbolic thing to it? I personally don't know. It's just I don't know. It's like a holy. It used to be like a holy. It's like a holy tree or something. Interesting. Well, isn't that like Chinese culture or something? Yeah, like, I think it's yeah. Asian, Japanese. It's a beautiful I, tree. Beautiful tree. Yeah. Well, a lot of people have been moving out of California recently, uh, including Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, and and a lot of other people I follow on YouTube. They're they're talking about it openly and just saying, "Yeah, fuck it. I'm not with the government telling me what to do all the time. These taxes are too high. There's a homeless population, and even plus the fires, man. These fires are the shittiest fires. thing for me. Fires. Like, there's like nature telling you to leave. Yeah, man. Like nature telling you to leave. It's like leave. <laughs> I'm like, all right, man. You're gonna kill me twice. <laughs> Where did Elon Musk move to? Leave. All right, all right, all right. All right. I'm going to Idaho, bro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Idaho was sick though. Yeah. How would was you it? live? Would you want to live in Idaho? That's the question. Like, if you're talking about leaving California. Nah. Nah. Would you be ready to fully move? Nah. Where where would you go? Nah, you see, I think that I'm too spoiled as a Californian. Or I, if I was going to leave California, I'd want to go somewhere like Canada. I think that I would want to stay in Lake Tahoe. But we'll see. I can we'll see, see what happens. I can see myself uh, in Arizona, like, kind of near the mountains in there. But uh, Dude, Sedona in Arizona is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've never been there, so it's like it'd be kind of a, a send just to 
the it's like the Cars movie. You know the first Cars. So if, you, movie. if you've never been there, why why do you see yourself somewhere that you've never been? Um, I mean, but like I'm gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate. I haven't been a lot of places. You know what I mean? Like I haven't been to Nevada. I've, I've been to Colorado, but like you really haven't. You don't want to go to Nevada. <laughs> well, my no, point no. is Colorado's pretty dope. My 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 point is that I think you really don't get a good picture of your your living situation until you you've experienced it for a, a long period of time and i think a majority of our lives have probably been in our own house right or in our college house so yeah we get some sort of like perception of what it's like in, in arizona and that was a great point like why would i want to why would i want to do that if i've never been there but I just have this gut feeling that California is not my vibe right now. Like, I, I don't know what it is. And, and, you know, that's a great point of, of, of saying, well, then what is, because where else have I, have I been and experienced um, my life, you know, but. You know, what, what about Arizona calls out to you? You know, what, what do you find attractive? Um, about Arizona? I don't, so I don't like the cold at all. I mean, I, I'll tolerate it, but I, ideally I don't like it um <laughs> nice and warm there and it's that balance of having the mountains in some sort of like warm climate and it's not in california and it's still i still kind of want to be on the west not west coast but western uh side of the united states but okay, that's a good reason have you been to the south bro you have you been have you ever been to the south i've never been to the south have you, you might really I like too. it in the I south i've never been to the south have you been to the south yeah, I've, I've been to the South one time for a wedding. Bro, that's when I met Goskowski, bro. At a, it was right next to the fucking Atlanta Stadium. Really? It was, in, it was a wedding in, it was a wedding in Georgia in uh, Atlanta. Yeah. When I, I was like 10 years old, though, so I barely remember it. But I met Goskowski, and it was pretty sick, dude. He did like he like took all the roses for like the ceremony, and he like did like a fucking like drop. He like punted them, dude. Like a fucking NFL kicker is pretty badass. Everybody went went crazy, bro. <laughs> and then I played him in you fucking cornhole. I played him in cornhole. Who won? He his ass, bro. No shit. Ass. You beat Gronkowski no in cornhole. No cap. You're kidding me. No cap. That's the only famous person I've ever met in my whole life. Mm. Uh, who cares about famous people though I think it's cool but I think if anything it's just inspire you to make yeah dude he's just a person you know what I mean like we're all just people just a person there is something captivating about having a lot of people know you and you being super good at one thing and there shouldn't be anything wrong in trying to achieve that if it's for a good reason. If you're oh. trying to be well known for fucking saving human race for like solving cancer, you know what's wrong with that? I think would that person even be famous though? That probably wouldn't be like an interesting person. Like nobody yeah, would even what, probably know. What do you did. mean? The person who figures out how to beat cancer is going to be the most famous person in the world, bro. But I, my theory is they already have a cure for cancer, man. It's well, on a shelf well, that's a famous, that's a famous theory. Okay, okay. It's kind of obvious. <laughs> right? like Multi-billion dollar a year. Like, why would they Dude. not just keep it a secret? Yeah, I would keep it a secret, bro. Yeah, no, seriously. There's no, there's no telling, man. Bro, I mean, they make billions every year off cancer research. Let's, let's let's go full circle here, right? You said it was all about the money, right, Lucas? So. If hypothetically there was a cure for cancer, then you would have all these cancer patients who are currently taking treatment and paying a good amount of money to big pharma and all these other medical costs. They wouldn't have to pay all that money and they could just be cured of cancer. You know, like if I was in charge of the whole medical uh, industrial complex, I would say keep these fuckers paying so we keep growing so our quarterly earnings go up so I keep my job, you know, but it's sad but and then you touched about like famous people well what about the whole entertainment industry i feel like everyone not everyone i'm not gonna generalize everyone but if 
if you want to become an actor or you're famous on some sort of sh social media platform, there's definitely a level of narcissism, meaning you're full, of, not full of yourself, but you are, your, your self ego is, is driving you. Um, and, and that's not healthy, right? Because you want to be, you, you want um, you to be well known for a skill or, 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 or service to the world, right? You, example cure for cancer right that's how we got onto this discussion but i think it's interesting right like i mean because we're, we're really just chimpanzees twenty thousand years later right a hundred thousand i don't know you know what i mean like like if chimpanzees are here we're, we're just right here you know what i mean that's how, that's my take that's exactly what that means good and that kind of fucking crazy yeah. What do you think humans are going to be like in like a million years if we're still like existing? So, you, you want to take this, Lucas, or I want to hear both of our answers too? Uh, can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> like, since, since John just said like we evolved from the chimpanzees, you know, like over like, I don't right. know, however million, million so, years it took, like, so Luke, yeah. a few million years from now, what do you, how do you think that humans are going to evolve farther from like where we're at right now? Like, you think we're going we're to gonna keep getting, getting we're going to ever all, we don't, we don't need any muscle, bro. We're, we're going to keep getting smaller and tinier. Yeah. We don't so, need, our brain's going to keep getting bigger. Our body's yeah. going to be like, we don't need any of this anymore. Yeah. So look at yeah. almost Bijan, almost like we're going to be looking almost like, I don't want to, you know, the stereotypical like alien of what an alien looks like. Yeah. That's my <laughs> take going to look like right because look at society as a whole right well, we have a lot less people exercising and stuff you know we've become so sedentary right like 500 years ago we would all be i don't want to say fit and strong but we were definitely like more fit for for survival because of all these diseases and stuff and now we're just couch locked watching screens all day so as our brain becomes smarter and smarter our head will grow but our will be so much re less reliant on our bodies. So they'll, they'll shrink and we'll almost look, my take is we'll almost look like, like an alien, right? Where, where our bodies are, are shrivel and stuff and our, our head is huge. And Haven't people been getting like taller over time though? Like didn't people used to be shorter like back in the day? Yeah, but that's mostly because of uh, nutrition. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I think. But so now you think it's going to go reverse and people are going to start getting smaller again? Like shorter? Not necessarily smaller, but our think of it if you never, like if you stayed at that couch for the rest of your life, right? What would happen to your, your body frame, right? It would, it would shrivel down a little bit. You know, you would, you know, you wouldn't be as reliant on, on that. And I mean, realistically with technology and stuff, I mean, moving and stuff is not going to be with our two legs. Do you guys remember the movie Wally? Yeah, aren't they all like floating around in like chairs or something? And, and like all, little like, hover movies. chairs, yeah. And they were searching yeah. for life on Earth. Yeah, that was Wally's job. That movie, that was a great movie. Honestly, I'm down to watch that movie sometime. Yeah, but I also, no. I also think in a million years we're not going to be here. I think we're going to kill ourselves or someone or an asteroid will hit us or, or something, you know what I mean? I yeah, think the I mean, human race is going to take itself out one way or another. Yeah. Just look at something. Hitler. It, could be. it was only less than a hundred years ago. But could something like that really happen now though? With all these movements and shit going on, could somebody really come in and just like oh, take over bro. like a country like that? Look at Trump, damn near, bro. Uh, well, like, Trump's kind of manny. Yeah, it's true. You can definitely compare Trump to Hitler. No doubt about it. <laughs> but, I mean, what Hitler did is, like, different, though. Man. Yeah, no, but Trump is he funny, bro. Like, million, Hitler wasn't, you know? Hitler wasn't, Hitler, like, didn't make any jokes, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, as fucked up as that. No, you know? Trump's comedy, man. Like, that's, that's my favorite Trump thing is, about him. Trump man. is pure comedy, dude. Like, There's anything absolutely. I like about him. It's that uh, he cracks me up, to be honest. I think you're a little stubborn if if you don't say he's funny sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. There's no way, like, dude. That one. Bro, thing I think he most did. things he say are pretty damn funny, bro. If I watch like a speech from Trump, I'm gonna be laughing at at least like half the things he said. 
just, just he he's, says he's it just to make us laugh, you know? No, he kills me, man. Some of the shit he says. It's great. <laughs> Have you seen his ads, bro? His ads are fucking hilarious. <laughs> He'll use, like, memes and shit. Like, oh, it's, it's just quality, bro. Yeah. It's just quality. His Snapchat ads just, like, make my day. Here, I, got, I got one right here. Bro, when you're like, has the clips of Biden and shit, it's so funny. How'd you have a Donald Trump ad on your phone so fast, Beach? I think I'm, sub- I'm subscribed to him on Snapchat. Like, you know the Snapchat <laughs> news shit? I think that's, like, one of my only, like, yeah, it's one of my, like, I have that and Sports Center. Those are my two subscriptions. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's all you really need, you know? Donald Trump and Sports Center. So, Bees, do you think Trump will win the election in November? I think so. A lot of people are saying Joe's got it, but I think Trump's going to win again, man. I, I dude, I thought, I thought I thought Trump was going to win. I, I honestly knew fucking in my heart that Trump was going to win the 2016 election because, like, I just looked at Hillary, dude, There's and then I looked at Trump, and, like, there was, like, it was so, like, like, there was just no way that Hillary was going to take out Donald Trump. But, like, now, after everything that's going on with coronavirus, bro, like, and mail-in ballots, dude, like, I don't know, And the Black man. Lives Matter movement. And the that, Black that Lives Matter, all this shit that's going on right now, dude. I was, like, I was pretty sure. I would have bet my bottom dollar on the last election that Trump was going to I just win. feel like all those states that I don't know about in this 2016, one. I feel like they're still going to go red in 2020. You know what I mean? I feel like because of the electoral college and all that bullshit, like, I don't know about more this. states that are going to go red than blue. I this is going to be a weird, this is, I think it's all going to hit the fan on election day, dude. I think all this buildup of everything that's been going on in all of 2020 is absolutely going to blow the casket on fucking election day or whichever day that like the news comes out that whoever wins, dude, like. So you think Joe's going to win, right? I don't know who's going to win, bro. I don't who's, know. Who's your prediction, though, if you were to give a prediction? I don't think it's going to be a fair enough election to even give a give an accurate oh, I think prediction. It's gonna be rigged. No matter who wins. I don't, I don't think like that there's – I don't think it's going to be fair enough to have a real winner, dude. Like, I don't know, dude. I don't know what's going to go true. on. How can be fair? Well, Luke, someone's going to be running the country in a year. You know what I mean? Dude, but it's going to be so, like, it's going to be so sketchy, bro. Like, did you just hear that Zach just said he got, he received three mail-in ballots? Like, what? You know? You know, like, they're going to be sending mail-in ballots to dead people, dude. People are going to be filling them out for dead people. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be a sketchy election, dude. Like, you don't think that well, Trump and... I've been a problem for, like, every you don't election, think, like... I- uh, why is everybody just talking about it now? I feel like it's probably happened every election. Well, like, it's, after- it's on another scale right now, dude. It is on another scale right now. 15% of people would do a mail in because you're super old or something. Oh, and because of COVID. Now, that's right. Now, I forgot about that. That's true. Because there's no, you can't vote. Now there's no other way to vote. You know? That's true. That's a big factor. Like, I don't know. Call me crazy, but. It, it's going to be both sides, you know? It's not like one side or the other is going to be the ones. It, both sides are going to be fucking trying to rig the fuck out of this shit. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I could see it going both ways. Really could. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I think the U.S. regardless will be in shambles, which is not good. Um, not good for college students graduating college. <laughs> right? Yeah. Whatever. Ah, I got to pick my sacrifice. It's all good. Note to self, John, if you don't find your sacrifice, six months by September 25th, you are a pussy. I mean, I, I feel like you don't find your sacrifice. I feel like your sacrifice finds you, man. You got to just oh, give it time. Oh, Bijan just understands it. You just, you got to give it time. It'll come to you, man. You know, that, if understands. it's really something you're going to be passionate about, I mean, yeah, you can go out and look for it. That'll probably help. But over time, man, it's going to find you, you know? That's true. That's the way I see it. That's a great, that's a great analysis. 
I don't think Bijan's watched a single Jordan Peterson video, but yet, so in tune. Who is who is Jordan? Peterson? <laughs> Made the JP video, but he's already he already knows what he's all about. You know, so. Dijon, you already know what, what JP's all about. But you should still watch JP. You know, it can't hurt. Uh, it might it might scare you a little bit though. Yeah. Is it a is it a podcast? I don't even I'm not even quite sure who Jordan Peterson is to be honest with you, boy. It's uh, uh, give him the give him the spiel, um. Uh I'd say he's he's been on pretty uh, relevant podcasts including Rogan and, and, and much others. But, um, I mean, I think he's most uh, successful with his book, 12 Ru- Rules for Life, uh, Maps of Meaning. And then, I mean, what I do is I'll just go on YouTube and look up Jordan Peterson motivational speeches. And I t- I'll tell you this, it's more than a fucking motivational speech. It, it, it changes the way you see life. It changes the way you see life. Yeah, he was also a professor at Harvard. Yeah, and I mean, look, I'll, I'll give you some background. He was a psychologist. Um, he's Canadian. Um, he's he, he's mostly famous from this Kathy Newman interview, where like he just like he shits on Kathy Newman. Like it's one of the <laughs> most things ever. Watching that, I encourage all the listeners to watch Jordan Peterson Kathy Newman interview. Um, Dude, I don't think I've even watched the Jordan Peterson Captain I've, I've, I've probably showed it to you because because the most famous quote is of that interview is why why should you uh, something uh, I forget I'm sorry uh, why why should your right of free, a freedom to a freedom of speech trump a trans person's right to be offended and what Jordan Peterson said is. In order to think, you must risk being offensive. Now I'll repeat that again. Why should, why should your freedom of speech impose on a trans person's right to be offended? We're talking about pronouns right here. And he's saying in order to think, you need to risk being offensive. Yeah, that's some true shit. If you listen to the interview, the context uh, makes a lot more sense. It's not just me saying humble jumble in the corner, but uh, highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend just listening to him. I mean, I think he'll set your toes straight. You know, he'll wake you up and he'll slap you in the face and tell you, um, you know, this thing called life is precious. You only get so many days of doing it. So you might as well do what you love, love what you do and, and follow your 12 rules for life. Rule number one, stand up straight with your shoulders back. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, well, posture check. All right. <laughs> hey, posture, posture says a lot. Posture's everything. I've been working on it. I've lately. heard it has like a huge impact on like yeah. your mental state. Just like having good posture, like your confidence, yeah. like affects everything. Uh, yeah, everything so, yeah. Little posture check is important every now and then. See, B, I'm telling you, Beach knows all about JP, bro. That's the first rule in all rules of life: is stand up straight with your shoulders back. What's what's rule number two? If you remember, um, I'll look it up real quick. Um. Any guesses? Guesses. Um, you know? What's the second rule of life? If the first one is stand up straight with the shoulder back, what's the second one? Is it drink good quality beer? <laughs> I hope that's on there somewhere, man. That'll make yeah, it I, got a lot more. I, I fucking found it. <laughs> well, who's we got, no? Rule number one. Stand up straight with your shoulders back. Rule number two, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for. Mm. Okay. Okay. So like, like treat, treat yourself like you're like your kid kind of yeah. Yeah. You're responsible like, for like treat, treat yourself like, like you matter. You know what I mean? Like, don't, you know, like, like if you were, yeah, tre- exactly. Like, like you're like yeah. your kid. Beautiful. Beautiful. Rule number three. I love that. I like that. Yeah. Rule number three. Befriend people who want the best for you. So, right? I mean, I think that's pretty simple. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. You know? I mean, I feel like a lot of people just befriend people that uh, end up tearing them down, you know? Yeah. 
I mean, if someone doesn't want the best for you, I don't know why you're spending your time with that person unless you are, uh, unless you have some sort of all alternative motive, but. I've had friends that have always tried to like, you know, one up me or something. Yeah. It and, you like, know, you know, it seems like they don't really want the best for you sometimes, you know, right. I have, I have certain friends that like, I've always wondered, you know. Yeah. And you know, what, you know, what, Bichon, I think that ultimately comes down to them being insecure about themselves. You know what I mean? Like if they're not, if they're not willing to be vulnerable and, you know, have a, you know, be truthful and honest with someone, you know, you, it, it, when you're in fight or flight, you know, you, you're a little bit more hostile, more aggressive, and you, you get in that little thing. But what that tells me is that you're, you know, you're afraid, you know what I mean? You're not, or, no, or I agree. I trust me to that view. Uh, yeah, that's rule number three. Uh, one of my, my favorite rule, rule number four is, uh, compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Oh, okay. That's a good, that's a really that's good, a good one. one. Uh, there's a really good Ernest Hemingway quote that's, um, that says, let me remember it. It's, um, <coughs> don't, there is no, like, there is no satisfaction in, in being better than another man only in being better than your former self, something like that. Oh, I like that. I think I've heard that mm -hmm. before. I know, I know mm -hmm. what you're saying. So yeah, that was rule rule number four. Rule number five does not um, apply to us, but I'll still say it. Do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. I mean, I think that's pretty important, right? I mean, like your your kid is you have to protect them, you know, and, and all this other stuff. And and wait, wait, re repeat that rule one more time. Right, I'll say it again, and and. Uh, you guys can comment on it because I, I don't really have a good analysis of it. Um, don't let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. Okay, well, I agree with that, but I mean, you can only, you really can only control what your kid does to a certain point, especially when they get to a certain age, you know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, your kid is probably going to end up doing shit that you don't like. I mean, you know, it would take a lot for you to not like your kid, though. I think of it more on a micro level than a macro level. Like, let's say your kid loves playing with, like, um, or loves the sport. You know what I mean? Like, let him do it. But if your kid's being annoying and playing with this Gatorade bottle and just, like, you know, smashing it all the time and being, like, obnoxious and stuff, I don't know. You have to read the book to really understand that rule, I guess. But um, number six, a rule I'm still working on. Set your house in order before you criticize the world. You know, that's, he, he's basically saying, you know, make, up, make your bed and clean your room before you talk shit about someone else or, or have uh, 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 feel, um, an intellectual opinion about the world. You know what I mean? If you, you know, your opinion is not justifiable if you can't keep yourself and your house in check. Very true. I don't oh. know. I'd agree. Very true. Okay. I need a, I don't know what one of these words mean, but, and I should, but uh, we'll, we'll continue to the next one. So rule number seven of 12, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. And I, to be honest, call me stupid. I love I, that one. I do not know what expedient means. And I was about to say, I do not know what expedient know. means. Expedient means. All right, repeat that one more time. I know exactly what expedient pursue, means. Pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. It means do what means something to you, not what's fast and easy. That's what I was thinking, but is that what expedient means? Expedient means that. quickly, fastly, fast, okay. expedient. So don't take shortcuts. No, that makes sense. That makes mm. sense. Okay. Yeah. I like it. I like that. Uh, I'm going to look it up just to be sure. So I'm not looking like a dumbass, but. <laughs> well, I feel like fact checking, like, you know, you need to fact check on a, on a podcast like this, you know, like Joe Rogan's got like Jamie, is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. Goes to him time. yeah I, I'm one of those guys. It's pretty crucial. We need a young Jamie once we make it. Never mind. Okay. Expedient means convenient and practical although improper and moral so basically Wait, impractical or practical convenient so basically quick and easy although yeah, improper and moral 
So basically, I was right. Yeah, you you were right. Don't yeah. take. I mean, I see it as don't take shortcuts. But yeah. I'm a, yeah, that's pretty much the basis of it. Yeah. I think I was confusing it with the word expeditiously by Kodak Black, which with means with speed and efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are on rule number eight of 12. Uh, mm. Tell the truth, or at least don't lie. Now, this is probably one of the best rules that I I followed through. I mean, I, I could care less about me sounding like a fool. I mean, I just said, I don't know what this word means. And, I, you know, I, I don't care. As long as I'm being honest and truthful, I could give a fuck about what people think about me and stuff, because I know that I'm just saying the truth. And that's, I think that's one of my most important rules for myself. And, and that's what matters mm-hmm. to me a lot, is just tell the truth. You know? All right, to play devil's advocate for a second, sometimes your truth can be subjective, you know, to like your own opinions and your own beliefs. You know, you will, you can like... Well, if you're talking about telling the truth, like, you know when you're lying. You I think, like, yeah. You can, always, you can choose to always tell the truth if you want yeah. to. Your idea of the truth. Yeah, but sometimes, thing, sometimes but. you'll tell the truth, and you'll your truth could be wrong. So I think there's a difference between being honest and being truthful. And sometimes you can be honest because you think you're telling the truth, but it's not mm-hmm. truthful because you know I may think that um, I may think that the the world is flat, you know, and I truly believe that and i'm being honest but it's not the truth Mm. no like uh so so i think it's the the, you're never going to be 100 at uh at the truth but i think it's the pursuit of just being honest and truthful is what yeah is yeah i agree it's just the difference between honesty and the truth i guess yeah good intentions Um, what are we on number nine? Yeah, so we're on number nine. Assume whoever you're listening to knows something you don't. Also, do you want me to say that again? Assume. Okay. I would love. I would love for you to say that again. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, okay. Assume whoever you're listening to <laughs> knows something you don't. Okay. So. You hear that, all you listeners out there? You hear that, all you listeners out there? That's how I see it. (laughs) Like, you know, you can't just assume you're smarter than everybody. Yeah. You got it. If somebody's telling you something, you got to hear them out. Yeah. They might know something you don't. I agree with that. I can guarantee you they know something you don't. No, they they definitely do. It depends, you know, you might know certain things about a topic. It just depends what you're talking about sometimes. But yeah, no, definitely. Definitely agree. I mean, I mean, that just comes to being open, you know, don't, I mean, I, and I think this kind of comes into two more worth smart people or people who are uh, full of themselves and, and probably, you know, they get good grades and stuff. So they're like, oh, bro. Um, and, and this is called an appeal to authority in, in logic and critical thinking and it's, which is a fallacy, but um, it would saying, oh, well, since I have a degree and you don't, my, my, uh, opinion on this or what I know is better than yours and that's simply just not the case so whenever you're having a conversation with someone always be open and, and assume that they know something that you don't because then you can learn something from it from the whole conversation and not just be in your own head saying oh this guy's stupid and, and whatever I say is right and all the time rule number 10 be precise in your speech, something I should really be better on. I think I, I mumble and jumble all the time and, and say all these words, just like what I'm doing right now. You move the hands a little bit, but no, be precise in your speech. You know, if you, you know, for me with my ADHD, it's like, uh, I think it and I say it in no filter, you know, something I'm always working on. It's just, you know, really just dial it down of, of, of your viewpoint, of your take, and and yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think of that rule number ten? Be precise with your speech. I mean, I agree with that. You know, a lot of people just love to hear themselves talk. We'll just keep going. But Let's you know, keep going. I try to I, I try to say things that matter. You know, I try to not just like speak whatever's on my mind. You know, I try to have like a filter, especially if it depends who you're talking to. You know, 
yeah. more comfortable with someone. You know, you'll have a little bit less of a filter, but that's the way it goes. Oh, I like this. This is going to come into play when we're like 70 years old. Don't bother children while they're skateboarding. Now, this is obviously a metaphor, right? Don't yeah. bother children while they're skateboarding. It's like, let children have fun. No. Let them make mistakes, you know? Don't, don't. Yeah. Don't let kids be kids, you know what I mean? It's almost what? like, how was is, how is that wrong? You know, let them have fun. You were right. No, I'm sorry. You were right. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I love it. Okay. Thank you. Big fan of that. <laughs> now, this rule number 12 is actually kind of sad. And this is another uh, metaphor that I can expand on. Um, it says, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. And what this is saying is, you know, life can be like tough sometimes, but really when you have a good moment, you know, when, when something comes up to you in the street or, or in life, you know, and, and it's a positive thing, um, take it in because, you know, life isn't always sunshine and rainbows and, and when there is a rainbow out, appreciate it and pet that cow on the street because you don't know um, when life's going to be taken away from you and you don't know when a loved one is going to be gone. So just, I mean, this comes back to your, your take, Bijan, of just being in the present. And when you see that cow on the street or see something that you love to do, just take it in because that's the only moment in time where you're that young and you get to experience all this shit, you know? So... Those I are, think that's my favorite one. Right. I mean, and that I mean, and what we were saying before is Bijan, like you're you're almost like your your mindset and framework is is very similar to what uh JP has been preaching with 12 rules of life. And I mean, I thought your analysis was spectacular. And um you know, these are codes that I self-tune every single day. You know, I always try and say the truth. Maybe I could be more precise. Haven't even picked my sacrifice yet. You know, hey, I'm okay. But, um, I mean, if you don't know who Jordan Peterson is on this podcast, I mean, we, we are begging you to get your shit together. We're begging you to get your shit together. I mean, I don't know how many times we got to say it. I mean... <sighs> Bijan, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little disappointed that you yourself haven't. I'm disappointed in myself. Yeah, that I'm I haven't, disappointed in you that you haven't. I'm disappointed, shown just, just I'm like disappointed in myself well, that I haven't shown you. I'm disappointed We've in myself. Countless hours of, of I'm disappointed in myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm disappointed in myself that I haven't I shown think, you. I don't think I've ever. It's even, all of my. All of the guy. blame is on me. All right. But I, I, I'll show I will, you some. We're watching out. some Jordan Peterson after this, man. After this podcast, Directly we're gonna podcast. watch some Jordan Peterson man. because for you, all you listeners out there, you know we're we're real people too, man. We have our problems, our mistakes, our ups, our downs. Oh. So you oh. know, we're all just looking to get better. This podcast is one of the things that helps me personally with that i know it helps john lamb with that you know it's therapy bro i say this all the time i was gonna ask like have you guys like felt like having this place to vent like has that helped your like daily life like well, like yeah. it would you know it, i mean Bijan, that's a great fucking point is because you know if you say it you know i feel some sort of obligation even though we only have 40 subs i feel some sort of obligation to do it you know i say get up move your feet be active eat healthy meditate do this. Take mm, it this. makes me actually every day I think about it. I said it in my podcast. You know, I'm fucking exactly. doing it, bro. And, you know, I love it. I love it. When it, when I love it. That's what I wanted to hear. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Exactly. And when it comes down to it, you know, I could give a fuck about, you know, some people give me shit about the podcast. Some people say, oh, like, it, it's weird. You know, you, you're doing this. You do. I'm doing this for myself. I'm not doing this for you. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this to get better. You know what I mean? And, and that's not to be selfish because I'm, I'm sharing like what I'm learning in this world and everything. But I mean, I'm here to improve all the listeners and myself. I mean, I think that's a great goal and, and, and that's what we're here to do on frequency 43. That's really the end goal. constant constant self-improvement every day it's just inevitable inevitable battle 
the question is how how hard are you gonna fight it you know dude what's been crazy to me is that I watched Jordan Peterson analyze these movies. I watched him analyze the Tiger, the Lion King. I watched him analyze, like, uh, he does this one other movie really good. I forget. He does. But um, I've watched Jordan Peterson, like, hours of Harvard lectures of him, in, of just analyzing Disney movies. Literally the first Lion King. Harvard professor analyzing this movie. Yeah. I'll, can I give an anecdotal example if possible? Yeah. So what, what I'm going to bring up is the movie Peter Pan. and He does know, that one, dude. Yeah. Right. right. So, so I don't know if you know this, Bichon, or not, but the word pan, pretty sure, look it up if you want. I don't know. Pan is the Latin root for boy. Okay. Peter Pan is in Neverland, and he will never grow up, meaning he – and he's being chased by a tyrant who's Captain Hook, okay? Now, now Captain Hook is being chased by this clock in, in this alligator, right? And that's a metaphor for mortality, right? The clock is chasing Captain Hook. Captain Hook's scared shitless that he's going to die. So this and that. And then you have Tinkerbell, which is almost a metaphor for, like, porn and stuff because Tinkerbell is not real. You know, Tinkerbell is, is Peter Pan's girl, but it's she's not real, and then you. Well, have, in the movie, she's real in the movie. No, I mean she's is just she not. She's just a fairy. Is that part of their imagination, technically? She's like I haven't seen the movie right? in a while, but because you have the lot. I mean, Peter Pan's not real because he's in Neverland, so he will never grow up, right? And Tinkerbell is with them, and and he's and that's the symbol symbolization of porn and stuff. And then you have Wendy, who is um, the natural. Uh, female right who wants a stable family and stuff and and you have the king of the lost boys and all this stuff so so the premise is peter pan is a boy who has never grown will never grow up will never pick his sacrifice and therefore he never gets any sort of meaning or fulfillment in life and i mean i think that's just a great example i mean i and obviously this is such a loose interpretation of it you know I, i didn't do any research before like looking right. at this it was just kind of um uh what was on my mind well can, can i go in here right now Get it. my favorite one dude jordan peterson does this great analysis of the lion king and it's like it's just the disney movie the lion king like a movie i know we've probably watched like a, a dozen times you know and and it's like you think it's just so basic and the story just makes sense, right? Just how that story just makes sense, you know? And it goes the way, but, like, you ever think – you never really think about why it makes sense, you know? Like, why does it make sense that that that, Sim, that Simba dies and that whatever his name is, the fucking cub, has to, like, go save his him from the belly of the beast? <laughs> but, like, it never – it. It, all this stuff. Ever since I've watched Jordan Peterson analyze a couple of movies, I have never looked at movies in the same way ever again. Not once. Not like you look at a movie. Like I was watching this movie last night called Anaconda Two, bro. This fucking killer Anaconda <laughs> just like wipes out this fucking crew, and it's just like a super basic story plot and shit. And but it's like, but it's like literally everything is going fine. Everything is going fine. Everything is going fine. It's like order. They're in order. Everything's fine. Or everything's fine. They're they're sailing on a boat in the Amazon trying to find this like flower, right? Everything's fine. Everything's orderly. Everything's orderly. And then they take the fall into chaos. Their ship their ship their ship like malfunctions and they go off of a fucking waterfall. They take the plunge into chaos and it just keeps going farther and farther and farther down into the pit of chaos and it's like how are they going to get back up and you guys really have to watch jordan peterson analyze the movie because it's something else man it's something else that's one of those things Mm. Catholicism, right it's the flood is coming you know what i mean Mm. and that's that's happening in all of us right the flood is coming you know so so don't judge a man's character when he's holding the trophy at his high point, at his peak, but rather, what does he do when no one's looking at him, 
you know, he's back in the corner, you know, like, like that, that is what gets me going. Right. It's because this thing called life is going to be so fucking hard and difficult. And, you know, I, I, I see like, I see all these like things. It's just, just the training grounds, you know, just, just being, just getting ready for battle, you know, truly yes. just being like, okay, like, well, what's going to happen when your hair falls out? What's going to happen when you can't bust the nut? What's going to happen? You know, what's going to happen when your mom dies? You know, what's, you, you know, you, you, I mean, I don't want to like be some sort of like negative Nancy, but it's almost like, you know, like, it's hap- it's inevitable it's it will happen it's it's going to happen so so how are you going to how are you going to tolerate all the stress and, and pain and agony of life while still enjoying this precious thing i mean it was a yeah. one in four, it's a one in 400 trillion chance of you being alive not to mention at this time when we can do these little beautiful things you know we have an opportunity to establish your legacy on this earth because you know, we're not just taking pictures of each other. You know, we are keeping our opinions and, and posting them on the internet for, for our grandchildren and great grandchildren to see, you know, you know, it, it, I just love the whole perspective of it. And, you know, I know on this whole rant, I kind of went all over the place, but um, that was just on my mind and, and I'm sorry, but if we want to get a new topic, um, I'm totally open to that or we can keep talking. I love it. Yeah, I feel I it's a heavy it. one, man. It's a, it's a heavy one. You know? It's really a heavy one to talk with Jordan. Like, Peter, you talk about you. You say the name JP, and instantly we're going into another. Yeah. We're going into another dimension, man. It's yeah. Sorry to take you on this rabbit hole, Bijan. Yeah, Bijan, we're going down a rabbit I, hole. I did not see this podcast going this way, but once these emotions <laughs> are going, you know, I I get a little charged up. I don't know what to say. I mean. I I'm, I'm gonna have to check out Jordan Peterson right after this, man. I'm gonna have to see what's going on. With that. And I hope the listeners out there take a look at him too, because I mean, um, you know, we're all growing up. You know, we're all gonna have to find a way to make money and stuff. And and I think um, it's almost like a coaching book uh, for life. You know what I mean? Because. I mean, I don't want people to be miserable. I want people to be happy and fulfilled and, and do what they love. And I think what JP does is say, listen, like this life is not going to be easy, but here, are, here's what you can do to mitigate all the stress and suffering that's inevitable. And, you know, one of those is just picking something you love to do. And what you were saying, Bichon, is sometimes the thing you love to do finds you you don't find it you know and sometimes when you're so caught up and yeah. looking for what you love to, oh well, bro i'm running out of time i have to find a job like what do i love to do oh, i'm gonna do that relax you know sometimes like sometimes like life will just show you a little sign here and there but um you know i thought you shared some great insight and and you know i i think jp is um his medicine, and I think it's almost essential that you listen to him if you want to be any sort of, um, six, if you want to be successful in this world. I mean, I'm not saying you can't be successful if you don't, but listening to him would give you some sort of reality check on, on where you're at in this world and what truly matters to you. Bam. That's... Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm texting Skyhawk right now. I really couldn't feel any better myself than what you just said right there. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, and I've, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, and I'm a 100% a hypocrite when it comes to this, right? I can talk the talk, but like, I just ate a pizza, right? You know, am I eating healthy? Am I, you know, am I doing everything I can do to, to be optimal? And the, the answer is no, but I feel like everyone's got some sort of flaw, you know? I mean, I think what, what social media, and I'm going to change the subject a little bit, but I think what social media does best is it, it hides it hides the the flaws in us. It's the flaws that that make you, that makes people themselves. You know what I mean? It's it's what makes things beautiful. You know, like 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 I truly believe. I mean, in Lucas, I'm gonna take it back to the David Cho podcast, right? That little Asian artist is is through any sort of 
through any sort of art becomes comes extreme extreme suffering you know and i feel like with these tiktoks and, and social media platforms we have people putting face filters on and, and finding the perfect lighting and, and doing all this and it's just making you empty because you're you're playing chimpanzee comparing your attractiveness level to someone else and it's like whoa wait a minute like you don't look like that you're not having fun all the time and i understand you're selling the best version the best version of you to to the world so you can be the most uh uh sexually fit you know and all, all these sorts of things but your soul your soul is the one that's gonna suffer you know i'm speaking to you i'm speaking to the list your soul I mean, we're talking about your soul right here. You know, we're talking about you as a, your morals, your values, dog. We're talking, we're talking about what's, you know, you know, these types of things. I mean, I mean, and, and you know, maybe your morals are different, and, you know, these sorts of things, but just like really just take a moment to, to think about how addicted we are to these sorts of, of platforms and stuff, you know, and I mean, so I, addicted, I, so know, addicted. Like, just look at the time, bro. Dude, look sometimes at- my br- I'll literally go to Instagram and I'll literally not even realize how I got all like I'll like blank out for like twenty seconds. Then I'll just be like on Instagram, like, dude, how the fuck did I on Instagram? I'll like close this. Sh- I'll like right. I'll like close it. I'll be like, dude, how-? like literally, it's so like my mind, brain will bro. go to autopilot and like fucking open instagram but I'll, I'll go through the, the same like pictures like multiple times in a day like i've already seen these pictures i'm like going through them again like there's really like no thought process to it like, like yeah saying, dude i i even tried to hide my instagram app in like a folder you know to make it like hard to find bro and it's, oh, I set a it doesn't matter on it one time it doesn't Your matter bro like, set limits like, on it. i have I, to I delete really it bro like i have to delete it i've been debating doing that myself um yeah dude i kind of just want to go cold turkey on everything but i went back into twitter because of frequency 43 and it's been hard to pull out i just like go into the trending and like looking at what's trending and it's pretty like oh man it just you know it makes you it makes you sad but like it just you know it just you keep going back for more you know it's so bro it's it's just it's addicting man it's addicting. I've actually never been a big Twitter guy myself, but um, I don't tweet anything, man. I just like looking at everything. Like it's crazy. It's like an unlimited source of fucking like bullshit, like controversy, like you know, like it's interesting. And what's funny? What's funny too is what's gonna get all. It's funny because I sometimes I tweet some sort of like. Uh, uh really like mindful stuff when i'm like really in my thoughts and it'll get uh, zero favorites but what 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 does get um most of the retweets and favorites is is things that are um tribally toxic you know truly exactly. controversial stuff exactly. you know we're going to war you know like we're going it's almost like it's almost like on twitter like our brains are like we're going to war right now you know so like this side's ready and this side's ready and in the clash is there and then all you know no one gives a shit about you could say the most inspiring quote of all time but if it's not gonna if it's not gonna invoke some sort of emotion then it's not gonna get it's not gonna trend and i think i think us being humans we're hardwired we're we're genetically hardwired to more negative emotions than positive emotions strictly strictly due to uh the need to survive you know Yeah. Beautiful. I'd agree. Um, well, um, I'm almost ready to wrap, wrap this thing up on frequency 43. Um, if you guys want to keep this thing going by all means, but, um, you know, I've, yeah. I've said just about everything I wanted to say, you know. It's good to I be think, out yeah. here having the platform to let's get some mind. I'd love, I'd love to come back. 
yeah, let's get some closing remarks, um, starting with Lucas, then we'll go Bijan, and then um, uh, uh, I just say maybe look into maybe maybe if you're feeling like it, look into some ancient lost advanced civilization stuff. I mean, you know, I've been getting some shit from it lately from my roommates, but because uh, they're they they really don't believe in it. And I've been getting a lot of flack for it, man. You know, I, I've been a big con- conspiracy guy. And uh, I have been, I've kind of been living in my little bubble, you know. And then I kind of, like, got my conspiracies out there to, like, some people who actually, like, did not fuck with them, you know. And, um, you know, we're experiencing some feedback. And I'm realizing where I'm wrong on some of my some of my stuff. And, you know, the word conspiracy itself, you know, it's just a label. So, just another label uh maybe just look into advanced lost civilizations give it a give it a peek uh there's a lot going on with aliens right now you know we really really don't know what's going on with that i mean it could be anything as far as the government planning an alien invasion to actual aliens so it's really quite a crazy time 2020 coronavirus at Chico State right now, man. So that's all I got. Let's give it away to Young Chops himself. Mm. That was beautiful, man. That was beautiful. Um, just to go off what you said a little bit, you know, uh, whether, whether it comes to conspiracies or, or, you know, whatever the crazy shit's going on right now, just keep an open mind. Like we were talking about earlier, you know, like a lot of people just aren't open to to listen to other points of view right now. You know, I've like it's so two sided. It's been, you know, more two sided than it's ever been. So, you know, the one advice I can give, you know, one piece of advice is just keep an open mind. Keep your head up. Keep striving forward, you know. Don't look back. No no point looking back. Keep moving forward, you know? Get after it. Keep going. Yeah, Beach couldn't have said it better myself. Um, I mean, what we're talking about one of the rules of life too is um, when you're having a conversation with someone, don't always assume that they know something you don't. You know, don't. You know, what I always hate is is when you try and be right. You know, it, it's almost like you know when you're in a group of guys, it's like you're just trying to prove that your point is right, so you can be right when when really you you should be going for the middle ground of some sort of truth. But um, to close it up, I mean, I would just say, you know, if you've listened to this entire podcast, first of all, thank you very much. And, you know, I mean, we take we take great pride and joy, you know, talking on Frequency 43. I mean, hopefully, you know, our our mission right now, and that's pretty much just have an open mind and and, and self-improvement. Don't always listen to what uh, the screens have to say. Um, You know, I mean, we we say this all the time, eat your fruits and vegetables. get after it, you know, find something you love to do and do it. Um, you know, and, and I'm going to end it's just saying time is precious. So if, if you are, if you're half assed in something and you kind of like it, but you don't know, you know, why not just do it? And if, if you hate it after that, do something else, and, and, you know, do something, you know, I, the, what I hate to see is, is someone live their life, um, watching screens all day, and then you're going to be 75 and unfulfilled and saying, I didn't do anything I love to do in this world. And, and that's why we're here. We, we're here to, you know, make you happy, make us happy. You know, we're, we're, we're all here for positive vibes. And um, I think that's truly what it comes down to on Frequency 43. And um, I'd like to thank Bijan uh, for coming on. Hey, Bijan, you've been a stud. Um, you know, I thought you brought some – great content and perspectives and you know i think you're a great fit for frequency 43 so thank you yeah thank hey, you thank you thank guys you, you know, thank you. Beer. i definitely plan on coming back you know i love coming here you know speaking my mind it's a great thing you guys got going here you know i respect it i like mm-hmm. a lot hope to be All back right. thank you very much um it's been a pleasure it's been a pleasure thank you for listening to us you guys um out Let's get out of here, boys.